I'd like to talk about mathematics in general, the very, very big picture. Mathematics makes statements about things. In arithmetic, the things are numbers. In algebra, the things are numbers and variables. In trigonometry and calculus, the things are functions. Whatever we're working with, we like to examine them, compare them, and talk about their various properties. Numbers, for example, can be even or odd, positive or negative, prime or composite, and so on. Once we've studied our things carefully, we look for ways to combine them. In arithmetic, for example, we can add two numbers and get a new number. This is called an operation. Multiplication is another popular operation. Now, mathematicians are a rather lazy bunch, and we have a fascination with doing nothing. As soon as we have an operation, we immediately ask, is there a way to do nothing with it? With addition, for example, adding zero does not change things. Such a thing is called an identity, as in zero is the additive identity. With multiplication, however, multiplying by zero th changes things quite a bit, because anything times zero is zero. The multiplicative identity is one, because multiplying by one does not change things. While this isn't terribly complicated, it confuses a lot of people that the word nothing refers to different things at different times. If we are adding, then nothing means zero. If we are multiplying, then nothing means one. If we're sliding triangles around, then nothing means not sliding it at all, which we can argue is a way of sliding, the not sliding. Anyway, once we have a kind of not doing anything, we look for a way to undo our operation. That is, if you do something, is there a way to do something else so that together you haven't done anything? Is there a way of undoing adding 5 to a number, for example? Yes. If we then subtract 5, we get back to where we started. A pair of operations that undo each other are called inverse operations. Mathematicians love these. Division is the inverse operation of multiplication. Taking square roots is the opposite of squaring things. The desire to do this leads us to new things to study. For example, mathematics starts with the counting numbers, also called the natural numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. If we add two of these, we get another one which is lovely. However, these don't contain the identity. Thus, we throw the number 0 into a collection and end up with the whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. It sounds a little bit silly to use different words for collections that differ by only a single number, but the number 0 was perhaps the most important discovery in the entire history of mathematics. So we do. In order to undo addition, we introduce subtraction. Unfortunately, we can't always subtract whole numbers and get another whole number. If we subtract 2 minus 5, for example, we will end up with a negative number. Thus, the next group of numbers we study are called the integers, which include all the whole numbers and their negatives. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Actually, once we have the integers, we don't really need subtraction anymore. Adding negative 5 is the same thing as subtracting 5. So there really isn't anything that can be done with subtraction that can't be done with addition. We say that negative 5 is the additive inverse of 5, meaning that it is the opposite so long as we are adding. It is because of this that I like to say that addition and subtraction are ultimately the same thing because we can write any addition statement as a subtraction and any subtraction statement as an addition. For example, 3 plus 4 is the same thing as 3 minus negative 4. And 5 minus 7 is the same thing as 5 plus negative 7. If we multiply two integers, we get another integer, which is just great. The multiplicative identity is 1, and that's also included, and that's lovely. However, however when we try to undo multiplication with division, we run into problems. If we divide 5 by 2, for example, we will end up with a fraction. It's not one of the integers. Thus, the next group of numbers we study are the rational numbers, which are all the fractions are in integers. For example, 5 sevenths or 14 thirds or negative 8 fifths. It is useful to notice that each of our successive groups of numbers entirely contains the previous group. 
the counting numbers are all whole numbers. And the whole number are all whole numbers and their integers and their rational numbers. The whole numbers are integers, they're also rational numbers. To represent a number like 5 as a fraction, just write it as 5 over 1 or 10 divided by 2 or something like that. Just as addition and subtraction are really two different kinds of the same thing when we have integers to work with, multiplication and division are two kinds of the same thing when we have fractions. Dividing by 2, for example, is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. Dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, the fraction flipped upside down. At this point, we have reached the first place where mathematicians become a little sad. With the integers, we are able to undo absolutely any addition with a subtraction. However, even with all the fractions in the world, there is one multiplication that we cannot undo. We cannot undo multiplying by zero. If I, told you that I, if I tell you that I just multiplied two numbers and got zero, you will know that one of the numbers was zero, but there's no way to figure out what the other number was. This is the root of the whole you can't divide by zero issue, which is why so many mathematicians are quite touchy about it. Every time a mathematician divides, he or she will take the time to point out that the dividing number was not zero. It's that important. Other than that, we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide any two rational numbers and get another rational number. For a long time, mathematicians were happy. However, then someone came up with the idea of squaring a number, that is, multiplying it by itself. This counts as an operation, although instead of combining two numbers, it works with only one number at a time. There isn't exactly an identity for this operation, although two numbers remain unchanged when squared. One and zero. The operation that undoes squaring a number is the square root. Because 5 squared is 25, the square root of 25 is 5. However, this leads to a number of problems. For one, if we multiply negative 5 by itself, we also get 25. How can we tell if the 25 was 5 squared or negative 5 squared? We can't. Thus, we give up and we say that square roots will always be positive, except the square root of zero, which is zero. With multiplication, multiplying by zero was the only thing we couldn't undo. With squaring, none of the squares of negative numbers can be undone. This makes mathematicians rather sad. What is worse, the square roots of most rational numbers are not rational. The number five is lovely but the number that squares to be 5 is insanely complicated. A lot of people will guess 2.5, but this adds to itself to get 5, not multiplies. When we square 2.5, we get 6.25. Now, it takes a calculator to see that the square root of 5 is 2.23606. Oh, the digits never stop, never repeat, and never show any pattern. This is not a rational number, not a fraction but a whole new kind of number called irrational. The only way we can come up with a new collection of numbers to study is to take all the possible dec decimals, including the ones whose digits go on forever with no rhyme or reason. These form the real numbers. We can add and subtract any two real numbers to get a new real number. We can multiply and divide any two real numbers to get a new real number, except divided by zero, of course. We can square any non-negative real number to get a new real number. We can square any, uh, we can take square roots of any zero or positive real number to get another real number. In order to get the square roots of negative numbers, mathematicians invented imaginary numbers, which square to be negative. These combined with the real numbers form the complex numbers, which are beyond the scope of most math classes. In algebra, we introduced variables, which are letters that stand in for unknown numbers. They aren't so tricky if you accept the fact that a lot of the time, you simply can't do things. What is x plus 2? Well, it's x plus 2. Until someone tells us what x is, we can't simplify this any further. We can add these, or leave them uncombined like this, and subtract these, multiply and divide these. Dividing is often tricky, but again, we usually just write them like a fraction and leave it like that. For example, x plus 2 divided by y is written x plus 2 over y. When we find out what x and y are, we can compute this. And until then, we leave it just like that. Basic 
basically, variables are just generalizations of numbers. Rather than say, 2 plus 5 equals 5 plus 2, and 6 plus 9 equals 9 plus 6, and so on and so on, we can just say a plus b equals b plus a. And let a and b represent any numbers we like. Rather than say that the area of a triangle is formed by taking half of the product of the length of the base times the height, we can just say a equals 1 half b times h. Functions are generalizations of operations. When we square a number, we multiply it by itself. We can write this by saying the square of x is x times x. If we want to multiply a number by 0 0.0625 and then add it to the original null number and call this adding Massachusetts tax, then add tax of x is x times 0 0.0625 plus x. Multiplying works with two numbers, and it could be called mult xy is x times y. If a function wants to do something more complicated, like f takes an x and a y, and it gives you 3x plus y divided by 2x minus 6y, then so be it. It's just you give me an x and a y, and I will do that to it, and that's what the function does. The situations in real life where we take a bunch of numbers and do something with them are practically limitless. Generally, we get computers to do all the number crunching for us, but lots of the good jobs out there require people to know how to get computers to compute functions and how to recognize when the answers are not making sense. That's the part that the computers have a really hard time about. They, they're not very good at identifying when something's ridiculous. In any case, this is mathematics in a nutshell. We study things. We combine things with operations. We enjoy it when an operation has an identity. We use inverse operations to undo the things that we have done. We use different kinds of numbers depending on which sorts of things we want to do. We use variables to generalize numbers. And we use functions to generalize procedures. That is a lot of mathematics.